Welcome back to Fact 8 TV News. This is Gregory Higgins and you are turned on and into the only real fake news that matters today. Tonight I'll have stories on where you should direct your faith, our new Homeland Terrace factory, and our latest home protection system. And working with me tonight are my anchor men. Mike Siri here with stories on genetically engineered tofu cattle, a new super turbo laxative, how we will soon fuel up our cars and ourselves at the same time, and the future of making power with your poo. And also with us tonight is Anchorman. Jeff Semperbon here with stories of gender identity confusion, how future politicians will need to prove a fraction of percentage of Indian DNA to complete an election, and how social media can prove who is most racist in a political conflict, and how historians need to correct history to show all the positive influences Russia has had on the evolution of our democracy. And now I'll turn it over to Mike with his first story on the future of tofu cattle. Thanks to the current craze of genetic engineering and the need to reduce methane gas emissions from beef cattle to help reduce global climate change, Onoco genetic engineers have developed a way to produce tofu from cattle. Yes, you heard that right. By inserting soybean genes into cattle embryos, Onoco scientists have been able to produce tofu cattle. As these exciting new hybrids graze and grow, all that red meat muscle turns into strong and firm bean curd. These new tofu cattle have the same strength and firmness of beef cattle and no more dastardly methane gas emissions. Now just think, you'll now be able to enjoy the healthful benefits of bean curd without the stigma of being a whiny, wimpy vegetarian. You'll know that a hapless creature died for your tofu so you can enjoy your meal like a real American. Our engineers are also working on further progress and hope soon to announce the development of dairy cows that will actually produce soy milk. Although these cattle are still in the development stage, the only worry has been that the methane emissions produced will now be transferred to the consumer. <laughs> Very Worrying makes more gas. Here we go. Thank you very much, Mike, for a very informative story. It's been truly good. Jeff is going to have the next story on uh, non-ex discrimination. In a lawsuit that could be straight out of the children's TV show Sesame Street, the letters F, H, J, Q, and V have filed suit against the city of New York claiming discrimination. The complaint argues against the city's new law, which took effect on January 1st, and which allows parents to list their child's gender on their birth certificate with an X rather than specifying a gender. The letters F, H, J, Q, and V, claiming to represent all non-X letters, say in their complaint that the designation of X to indicate non-identified gender unreasonably stigmatizes other letters and gives the appearance of a government attempt to unfairly establish X as the exclusive standard for designating gender non-identity, infringing on the rights of other letters to be equally used to designate their parents' choice not to identify their child's gender. If parents want to list their child's gender as D or R or any letter other than X, the city's discriminatory policy doesn't let them do that, the complaint says. Even more appalling is that the city said this law was passed to give parents the freedom to let their children eventually choose to identify the gender they want. But it doesn't do that. It only gives them the choice of male, female, or X. If they choose to identify as G or U or any other letter, this new law doesn't let them do that. It's a complete sham of choice where the only non-gender identifying choice allowed by the oppressive regime is X. Fact 8 TV News has reached out to the city for a response, but as of yet have not heard from the city's legal department for any response to the lawsuit. Oh, very interesting. I don't know how many sexes there are now anymore. Is the male, female, and... And, and X. Well, and X. Yeah. X marks the gender. And apparently there'll be F, H, Q, U, and Z. Whatever they come up with. Oh, kind of, uh... Uh... What do you... <laughs> 
In alphabet soup of sex. And then we'll have symbols, and it'll be the genderly, formerly known as Prince. Maybe it'll be some new kind of sex organs that people <laughs> come up with <laughs> one of these <laughs> days in some factory or, you know, laboratory or something like that. Organs made of bean curd, perhaps. Oh, yeah. That'll be interesting. Anyway, I have the next story. A faith in what? In the wake, or should I say tsunami, of the Trump presidency, scientists across the country have put the push on for the race to send people to colonize Mars. The first two years of the Trump administration has clearly shown that the country doesn't need science and can instead rely totally on a faith-based approach and or Trump's natural instinct when dealing with such diverse issues such as pollution, climate change, potential disease pandemics, and cyber security. Realizing that their highly skilled work and ingenuity is no longer wanted or needed in this country, many scientists have taken the initiative to move it to the next level on another planet where they say that their skills and experience will be appreciated. Unfortunately for these scientists, their value to society is severely hampered by their lack of faith in God and their, ex uh, and their unwillingness to accept President Donald J. Trump as their new Lord and Savior. And in order to continue to pursue their work as scientists, they have in fact been forced to plan their escape to another planet, one that is godless and inhospitable to human life. So let's give them all a big send-off and praise the Lord for their new refugee status. Hopefully they'll be appreciated out there in space somewhere while we are real Americans, God's chosen people, enjoy our walled garden of paradise cultivated by President Trump and his administration. What does the uh, J stand for in Donald J. Trump? Uh, I think it's Jewish. I was just wondering if it was one of those new sex designations. but It could be. I don't know. What not do in, now, because in New York, you would only be allowed an X. Well, that's uh, true. Donald uh, X Trump, then maybe. But okay. we'll anyway, see Mike changes that. Mike's coming up with our next story. Mike, we're going to turn it over to you. Well, in these fast-paced, have-to-get-things-done days, most of us are on the run and don't have time to eat properly. And in all these days where we try to keep race pace rather with work, with the children's activities and business deadlines, it seems as though we have no option other than eating fast food, even though we may not like it. And fast food absolutely does not provide you with the proper amount of fiber needed to keep you regular. Because we care about your regularity, our nutritional scientists at Onoco Products have come up with the much needed relief. The end all cure all for the pain of chronic constipation is here at last with the all new Turbolax. Turbolax will give you the immediate and instant relief faster than any laxative on the market today. That's because Turbolax is the only laxative that is fortified with millions of microscopic scrubbing brushes and Eukanuba wax. So your bowels will be immediately scrubbed clean, waxed and left with a slippery, shiny, clean and ready for your next movement. The worries of living a life depending on a diet of junk food is over. Eat all you want, because no matter what you eat, it's all coming out clean and easy. Just remember, Turbolax will keep you clean from your rooter to your tutor. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. <laughs> you should also remember that. <laughs> With Turbolax, you can win the race to the toilet. <laughs> uh, that's all you need is a turbo to get you going. All right. And Jeff, you got ne our next story. With the recent announcement that Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren is planning to run for president, Wall Street executives are scrambling to document their own Native American heritage in preparation to opposing her candidacy. Senator Warren has long called for increased regulation of the financial sector, and banking and investment executives worry that a Warren presidency might bring stifling new regulations that will limit their ability to profit from gambling and financial instruments while leaving it to the public to cover their losses. 
To oppose her on an equal basis, they hope that establishing Native American ancestry themselves will give them greater cred credibility that they'll have the best interests of the country at heart. Surveys show that Native Americans are one of the very few groups that's viewed positively by a majority of American voters across a broad range of demographics. And financial corporate executives hope that establishing their Native heritage using sketchy DNA testing will gain them a more favorable view by a public that's already largely forgotten their complicity in the 2008 financial crisis. Fact 8 TV News has received inside information from a whistleblower in a DNA testing lab owned by Pfizer which has its own reasons to be concerned with increased regulation under a Warren administration. The information documents a large number of requests for DNA tests received after Senator Warren announced earlier this month that she'd formed a campaign exploratory committee. The requests particularly asked about Native American heritage and in many cases contained veiled references to past financial transactions that suggest an element of coercion to produce favorable results in exchange for keeping silent about past shady bank deals. We'll continue to follow any developments in this story, but don't be surprised if we see a number of financial executives with DNA test results showing them to be descendants of various native tribes as the 2020 presidential campaign gets underway. All right, thank you very much, Jeff. Oh my God. At a loss for words at a lot of these things these days. I don't know what's going, but I have the next story about our new homeland terrorist factory. Thanks to the policy put in place separating the children from the parents when illegal immigrant caravans cross over the Mexican border, America has started working on one of our greatest homegrown terrorist systems ever created separating children from their mothers and families to be held in for-profit facilities before being assigned to foster care by complete strangers is the greatest way to start. Raising traumatized, love-deprived children and keeping them locked in cages creates anger, frustration, emotional pain, and a lifetime of never-forgotten resentment and hatred towards a child's captor, which is the greatest way to start children on the path to becoming future militant op opponents of the government. While only a small fraction of these individuals will ever actually take up arms against our society, the large numbers of traumatized children will assure a steady supply of future terrorists to threaten the citizens of America. This new system of family separation to promote future terrorists greatly helps to maintain job security for the positions of homeland security and terrorist, te terrorism task forces for decades to come. And terrorism is actually healthy for the economy. It creates a wealth of jobs, increases firearms and ammunition sales, keeps EMTs, hospitals, nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, and prosthesis manufacturers busy. Not to mention the bonanza for the media and free dramatic news coverage of every thrilling attack. And not only that, but terrorist attacks help to bring common people together for a common good, fighting terrorism. Look at the current political landscape. One might despair of ever regaining the unified bipartisan spirit that the country enjoyed in the wake of the September 11 attacks. But a future wave of attacks has the potential to unite the country again. So if anybody ever comes to you, complains about lonely, traumatized immigrant children being locked up cages, you can just honestly and openly remind them that it's all for the good and safety of the American people. And it's all part of the effort to make America great again. <laughs> God bless America. That, you know, it, it's, it's a good point because a lot of people don't realize that to get better, you got, you got to first hit rock bottom. That's right. You, know? I mean, you got to get to the bottom before you can go up. That's right. Thank you very much. Mike, and you got our next story in. Well, thanks to a new type of high-octane corn liquor ethanol, you can now fuel your car and drink it, too. The future is coming, and it's already here. It approaches so fast, we can't keep up with it, because as soon as the future gets here, it's already gone on to the next level. The future of auto fuel is changing fast and drastically. 
With the advent of self-driving cars in the near future, the worries of being arrested for drinking and driving is soon to be long gone. Having a car that drives itself means that we'll all soon have the ability to go out and drink and drive all we want and never worry. The biggest worry you may have now would be walking up to the front door of your home and getting the key in the lock. And thanks to the newest corn liquor channel, you won't even have to stop at the bar or liquor store. This new fuel is entirely safe for consumption without the additives of previous ethanol-based fuels. With this safe new formulation, a fuel line can run straight from the tank into the passenger and driver's seats, ready for immediate consumption and alcoholic satisfaction. <laughs> so now, you can thankfully tell your friends and family that scientists are actually good for something. <laughs> All right, I knew they would come up with something. It doesn't that, really say how it tastes, productive. though. Well, you know, <laughs> after the first two, does it matter? <laughs> yeah, but those first two might be a little hard to choke down. <laughs> well, that's true, that's true. But it's progress. It's, it's a step in progress. the right direction. Mm -hmm. Not perfect. Progress, not perfection. I heard that somewhere once. Anyway, thank you very much, Mike. And Jeff got our next story. As most of our viewers are aware, there's been a tough competition recently to determine who was most outraged by a confrontation between a group of Catholic high school boys from Kentucky and a Native American drummer at the Lincoln Monument in D.C. recently. Conservatives and liberals have been competing ever since on social media to see who can be the most offended. Conservatives are defending their champion, Nick Sandman, the hapless student respectfully waiting for a bus ride when he was aggressively approached by a scary-looking liberal activist brandishing a stick, apparently triggered by his Make America Great Again hat. On the other side, liberals are defending their champion, Nathan Phillips, who is surrounded by a mob of MAGA-hatted young thugs while peacefully protesting. Accusations have been flying as each side aims to portray their champion as the true victim and cast aspersions on the motives of their opponents. But, as hard as they've tried, neither group has managed to complain as bitterly as the undisputed winner of the contest, Shar Yakataz Benyaman, who says he's a victim of both groups and of the media. Mr. Benyaman, who describes himself as a secured party Hebrew-Israelite American national of the tribe of Benjamin, says that both the Covington High School students and Nathan Phillips are getting all the press attention that should belong to him and his fellow black Hebrew-Israelite protesters. I'm just so sick of all this media attention calling out these kids in their MAGA hats as racists. My group and I have been out on the streets promoting black supremacy for years and we get ignored. True racism takes time and effort, takes dedication to a cause you truly believe in, and working to see the slaughter of those who don't look like you. But these little punks just get off the bus from Kentucky and get to be called racist just for putting on a hat? That ain't right. And then this old Indian guy gets all the credit for harassing these little punks when we were there yelling insults at them for an hour before this old coot showed up. It's not fair. This guy comes in banging his drum and chanting like some pathetic street musician who's performing for free at a demonstration because he knows he ain't good enough to make any money in a subway station. This guy just comes waltzing in with his drum and all the Trump supporters are giving him credit for harassing their MAGA hat kids. It's pretty clear that the media on both the right and the left are being controlled by Satan and refusing to help us get out our message, ignoring us while they give all the credit to some people who just happen to fit into their narratives, while ignoring our group who started this whole thing. For both the breadth and bitterness of his complaint, social media judges of the contest were unanimous in picking Mr. Banyaman as the winner. We do apologize to Mr. Banyaman and his group for only quoting a small portion of his 23-minute complaint, but we had to edit out the portions with language we're not allowed to use on community access television. Mm, thank you very much, Jeff. We are living in a time where, where everyone's offended in one way or another. Right? That's, for sure. So much, That's for sure. So much offense is being offended over here. Anyway. Anyway, Mike, you got a next, another magical invention that you, you want to talk about, don't you? Absolutely. We are right now in the process of marketing and distributing one of our latest and most inventive creations ever. 
your human waste can now be turned into power to create more than enough electricity to run your house and electric car. Thanks to Onoco products and developments, we have discovered a way through our newly developed nuclear fission toilet system to completely eliminate human waste and turn it into useful energy. Our newly developed highly sanitary seat and self-lubing sanitary tube system will automatically locate and insert itself into its target smoothly and cleanly removing all waste so no waste is wasted. It will also completely eliminate any need for toilet paper. Larger families could act, actually produce enough additional energies to sell it to less productive neighbors, giving families the incentive to make more babies, thus creating wealth through waste. <laughs> and the more you eat, the more waste you create. So being a full figure will again be a sign of affluence and success, unlike the current be fit craze of crazy people that believe it's preferable to be thin and fit. Just remember to include Onoco products into your life today for a happier and healthier <laughs> tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mike. And Somehow everybody... the combination of that and the Turbo Lax just sounds <laughs> like they some, probably some, work some together. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> They would probably work out great together. What do you well, think, man? Could be. Just, I just, mm -hmm. Whenever we're talking about that area and insertion, I just, I get nervous. You can eat as much as you want and as fast as you want and take your turbo well, wax and it'll come right out. The Eucanuba wax might, you know, help as a lubricant there. It may be a really great <laughs> way to make money, you know, just uh, eat a lot, turbo wax, nuclear fission toilet, and man, you'll be making millions. Never have to leave the house. Just have That's the food fact. delivered. Yeah, could be. Anyway, Jeff, you got our next story. An inside source has leaked to Fact Date News an outline of new <laughs> history standards that the U.S. Department of Education plans to release later this year. Motivation for the revised standards appears to come from a realization of the degree to which past anti-Soviet propaganda during the Cold War has skewed Americans' understanding of, of how our Russian allies have aided and benefited our country through its history. This revisionist history recently came to light after fake news media, aided by liberal extremist historians, questioned President Trump's praise for Russia for its military aid to Afghanistan in the 1980s to help liberate its people from terrorists. The new guidelines are intended to set the record straight. In addition to correcting the record on Afghanistan, suggested curriculum covers the actual history of long ignored topics, such as how Russian missile aid to Cuba helped both that island nation and the United States in the 1960s, how Russia aided in the post-war recovery and defeat of terrorists in East Germany, how Russia helped the Union during the Civil War to defeat the rebels and free the slaves, and how Russia helped America to free itself from terrorist-controlled England during both the War of 1812 <laughs> and the Revolutionary War. While no efficient co official comment has been made on the leaked outline, leaked documents include a favorable memorandum from Education Secretary Betsy DeVos praising the good guidelines for helping to correct the unjust negative portrayal of our Russian allies in textbooks that were written during the Cold War era when the U.S. government sought to inspire distrust and fear of Russia and the Soviet Union to justify costly foreign military ventures rather than letting the Soviets take on the expense of keeping peace in the world. She concludes her memo by stating that this may be the one case where providing funds to update 50-year-old old textbooks may be appropriate. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff. It is a shame that on um, how many people believe Russia is actually our enemy and that they've actually been doing so much good for this country. It's unbelievable. I yeah, know. It's they totally, to totally unbelievable. In the process of making America great again, all kinds of records are being broken one right after the other. And the one thing all of us proud Americans know is that sometimes you have to take the good with the bad in order to prosper. And something like a little government shutdown in order to protect our great horde country from the hordes of approaching illegals shouldn't get us down. Well, we have just the thing to keep your spirits up while struggling with the anticipation of the construction of our great border wall. 
Right now, we are proud to announce a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to bring to you a new level of safety and security for your home and family. Because we have for you at this moment the sale of the century. This is it. You can now protect your home and family with a realistic life-size President Donald J. Trump statue for your front yard. Trump statues are a surefire, immediate way to fix and save yourself and family from attacks in the upcoming un-United States un-Civil War. It's never been clearer that the new state of the being is that everyone in the country has to choose a side and how you can easily show that you have chosen the right side with our all-new weatherproof painted life-size statue, just like in the days of Moses. Moses, when death was at your door and you were saved by lamb's blood on your lentil, you can now show that you've accepted Donald J. Trump as your Lord and Savior and save the lives of yourself and your family today. Just imagine, you will be able to start and end every day together with your friends and family as you go into your front yard, stand at attention, salute and praise Trump while you sing God Bless America as a Trump-fearing family. Immediately, your smiles and cheering will let the neighbors know you're on the right side. And the more you praise and the more you celebrate your Savior Trump, the safer you'll be. And you don't have to worry about remembering the words or bringing, bringing, being in tune because your statue will be singing along with you using the latest motion sensor activated audio technology. So call Unorthodox Sales and place your order today because anyone that wants to be safe will have to have one. And if you place your order right now with your full payment, we will overnight ship your receipt showing your order so you can frame it, nail it to your front door, showing your proof of purchase while you wait for your statue to be shipped from the factory where every golden hair will be painstakingly molded and hand painted by the finest Chinese craftsmen to, uh, to achieve a startlingly lifelike appearance as if our beloved President Donald J. Trump himself were standing in your front yard. And if you can't afford the $8,900 price tag, installation not accredited, don't worry, because as long as you have a steady job or own real estate, you will immediately be qualified for our financing options based on the 30-year mortgage rates and point of sale. Please note that all installations are going to need to be inspected, certified, and stamped by Trump and NRA certified installation specialists. Thank you for your attention. That's it for our show. This is Gregory Higgins. I'd like to thank you for taking your time to watch our news tonight. So guys at home, ladies and children of all sizes, colors, ages, ethnicities, and whatever. When the story is too good to wait for the facts, Fact Day TV bring news brings you the news as we see fit. May you enjoy a good, clean life. And remember to be honest to the spirit that lives within you. Have a great day and a good night until next time. Mike, could you say good night? I certainly could, and good night, viewers. And Jeff, could you say good night? Good night, viewers everywhere. Mm. Don't worry, he'll be taking his medication mm. right after the show. Good night, you stupid teleprompter. I hate you.